He was the son of a Sheffield steel worker and rose to build an empire of nightclubs which quickly became a magnet for celebrities. Peter Stringfellow, who rubbed shoulders with the world's rich and famous for many decades and became well known for the number of women he slept with, died today. He was 77 and had been suffering from cancer. Well, Faye Barker looks back at the life of the king of clubs. The playboy entrepreneur known for his clubs, his charisma and his girls, a favourite among A-listers who were keen to perform and party at his venues. You mean, do I enjoy myself eating, drinking champagne, vodka and making love to beautiful young girls? It gets a bit boring occasionally. He began running clubs in Sheffield in the 60s and had a knack for booking up-and-coming bands, most famously the Beatles. <laughs> But it was the opening of the club in London he named after himself in 1980 that placed him at the heart of the capital's exuberant party scene. Gentlemen's clubs in Paris, New York, Miami and L.A. followed. His death this morning at the age of 77 follows a battle with cancer he'd been keen to keep private. This story would have been everywhere if he'd have announced that he was ill. Um, so I didn't think he wanted his wife and his children to to be reading that stuff, so he wanted to, to do it his own way and, and, and fight in private. He married his third wife, ballet dancer Bella Wright, in 2009. In his last TV interview, he spoke fondly of having two young children in his 70s. Life is wonderful and I'm enjoying it. My kids are enjoying it. My wife is delicious and gorgeous and I adore oh. her. And you're looking at the happiest man in the world. Well, Those who spent many a happy time partying with him say he'll be missed. He was great fun to party with and he knew everyone because everyone wanted to be seen here and to go to his clubs. It was the best club in London and still is to this day. But every star, Hollywood, sports star, famous chefs, you name it, they came to Peter's club and they wanted to be with Peter because he was great, you know, company. Peter Stringfellow's London venue will remain open, the man known as the King of Clubs, ensuring people will continue to party in his name. Oh, Peter Stringfellow, whose death was announced today. ...has died at the age of 77. The businessman who'd been suffering from cancer died in the early hours of this morning. He was as famous for his flamboyant lifestyle as his discos and strip clubs. David Silito looks back at his six decades in the industry. Fantastic. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> Have I got the best job of what? I don't know. Peter Stringfellow is more than just another nightclub owner. The big hair, the leather trousers. He was a showman who became a household name. He'd started out running clubs in Sheffield after a spell in prison for selling stolen carpets. Within a few years, he was booking Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles and The Who. But it was when he moved to London that he hit the big time. This was his 80s heyday, but fashions changed and in the 90s his disco empire was in trouble. So he shifted to what he called gentlemen's clubs. The strip shows saved him, but this man who boasted of sleeping with 2,000 women denied there was anything degrading or exploitative in the business. Indeed, in a conversation with the academic and TV presenter Mary Beard, he talked of being a feminist. I interpret feminism as saying quite simply, Women can do what they want to do and not be told not to by a man. That's simplistically. So if they want to take their clothes off, they can. And, um, and they can do anything. Do. It's not a matter of just being beautiful. They've got to be smart. And what they do is entirely up to them within the scope of the law. <laughs> Mary Beard was not the only one to be not entirely convinced, but he shrugged it all off. This almost unshakable self-belief had taken him from drafty church halls to medallion-strewn opulence. Peter Stringfellow, the self-styled king of clubs. Peter Stringfellow, who's died at the age of seven. The extraordinary and sometimes controversial life of Peter Stringfellow was remembered today after he died at the age of 77. He was born into poverty in Sheffield, but rose to set up the famous nightclub in his name, where he mixed with the rich and famous. Here's Richard Pallow on the man known as the king of clubs. The long hair, the outlandish outfits, the scantily clad women. Peter Stringfellow epitomised excess in an era that encouraged it. He was flamboyant from an early age, attributing a short prison sentence for selling stolen carpets to getting him focused in life, first as a club promoter in Yorkshire. 
He got the Beatles. I said, who are they? I've never heard of them. Before hitting the bright lights of London and opening his eponymous nightclub, the must-be-seen place in the 1980s. Champagne flowed, celebrities flocked here, the tone very much set by the owner. I mean, do I enjoy myself eating, drinking champagne, vodka and making love to beautiful young girls? It gets a bit boring occasionally. As licensing laws were relaxed, it became a gentleman's club in the 90s, which it still is today. But one of Stringfellow's oldest friends, the actress Vicky Michelle, says the gentleman at the heart of it all had time for everyone. And that was his success. He never spent more attention with someone, a celebrity, rather than the bloke who regularly came and, and drank at the bar. And, and I think that was his endearing quality, that he treated everyone as equal. In later years, the 77-year-old wasn't as prominent. He kept his treatment for lung cancer a decade ago a secret. The same for his time in hospital in the last few weeks as the disease returned. His third wife, Bella, was with him throughout. A private end to what was unashamedly a life lived in the very public eye. The nightclub owner, Peter Stringfellow, has died at the age of 77. Known as the King of Clubs, his most famous venue, Stringfellow's, is one of London's longest-running clubs, having first opened its doors in 1980. The businessman had been suffering from cancer, which he had decided to keep private. John Donison reports. <laughs> Have I got the best job of what? I don't Peter know. Stringfellow, the self-declared king right. of clubs, was a feature on the British entertainment scene for half a century. He opened his first okay. club in his hometown of Sheffield in 1962, after trying his hand as a barber, a car mechanic and a merchant seaman. When I was 21 year old, I decided, I, as per usual, I was chasing money, anything to get me some, some money extra. And um, I started booking a church hall called St Aidan's in Sheffield which I renamed the Black Cat Club. His move into adult entertainment in the 1990s with table dancing and lap dancing sometimes brought him into conflict with the authorities. Callers, <laughs> sexual um, encounter establishments is a derogatory term. It's a kind of penalising. We don't like what you do, so we're going to give you a nasty name. He preferred to call his establishments gentlemen's clubs and eventually opened venues in New York, Paris and Beverly Hills. He famously once claimed to have slept with more than 2,000 women. Critics accused him of objectifying women. Undoubtedly, Peter Stringfellow built his life and business around them. Peter Stringfellow, who has died at the age of 77. And our correspondent Simon Jones is outside Stringfellows in central London for us now. And uh, Simon, for someone who courted celebrity, who was such a public figure, a well-known public figure, he'd been incredibly private about this illness, hadn't he? Absolutely. He only told his family and close friends about the illness, so it has come to a shock to many people. Now this club he described as his heart and soul here in Covent Garden. It opened back in 1980 and celebrities would queue up to get into the club and also to have their picture taken with Peter Stringfellow. He was such a charismatic and popular figure here. Now he actually met his third wife here at the club and he had the naming ceremony for his two children here at the club. And that's because he said he was actually offered the chance to have it at Westminster Cathedral, but he decided that wouldn't be right and didn't fit in with his views of religion. Now, as well as that, he would describe this club as the premier gentleman's club in the country. He promised that if people came here, they would find attractive women, they would find opulence, they would find luxury, but they would also find discretion. And that discretion is something that characterised the end of his life. He clearly decided he didn't want people to know in public about the illness that he had. He had actually been diagnosed with lung cancer 10 years ago. Then again, he kept that secret he recovered from that but when cancer returned he didn't want the general public to know so the flamboyant figure very much wanting to share that news just with those closest to him okay Simon thank you very much for that Simon Jones in